What's up, guys? I'm Mike from Stocked Up, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We had a very interesting day in the market. We saw a lot of negative momentum across a lot of tech stocks, especially the QQQ is down around 2%. And what's pretty interesting is the Dow is actually up a little bit, but we just saw a lot of selling across a lot of different stocks today. NIO, uh, ZM, PLTR, they all got hit really hard. In this video, we're gonna be explaining what happened in the market today and what to look out for for tomorrow. We have some great picks, so make sure to stick around for the end. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. But with that being said, Tom, what happened in the market today? Yeah, Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell were still testifying before Congress today, and we can see the SPY really tanked off and ended up closing around 388 and then moved even lower now in after hours. But Treasury Secretary Yellen gave her blessing to the Federal Reserve's decisions late last year to allow banks to buy back their own shares again. And these share buybacks were pretty big for the banks. And she says that the industry's biggest names look healthier now, in her own words, after being held back from returning cash to shareholders during the COVID-19 pandemic. And then she also faced harsh questioning on a related issue when Se Senator Elizabeth Warren actually um, wants the big money management firm BlackRock to be regulated the same as Wall Street's too big to fail institution. So she wants to add some regulations to BlackRock. And she was just it was just some harsh questioning because if they start regulating BlackRock, then they might have to regulate some other institutions. And it, it could just be a big snowball effect as far as that goes. Very interesting. So we just saw a lot of uh, downwards momentum right when the day started, especially with NIO and just even the market overall. So very interesting. And if we just look at the charts of some of these stocks like the SPY, it's definitely not looking too good. We have NIO too. I mean, this thing's down 10% today alone. Uh, Zoom got smashed today too. So we're just seeing a lot of negative momentum. And I really wouldn't be surprised if we see this continue uh, for another day or two. What do you think? Yeah, like whenever we go to Neo's daily chart, like their daily just looks terrible. They have a lot of red today. There might be a little bit of green or something in the morning, just because whenever you see this much red, there might be a little bit of a pop back up. But I would say personally that I think it's going to go down tomorrow again. Um, overall, these tech stocks, they've been really overpriced, guys. They've had a lot of hype. And now that hype is starting to leave. And this is just the cycle that these stocks go on. And it's it's honestly a good thing because now we can sell some cash secured puts on NIO around 30 or $31, which is below the low here and, it, and it's a pretty good opportunity right now sounds great what other news happened today yeah 14 states including louisiana and wyoming filed a suit on wednesday against president joe biden's moratorium on new oil and gas leases on public lands and water Biden's order on January 27th to pause new leasing was part of a series of executive actions to address climate change and curb planet warming carbon emissions. The president also directed the Interior Department to begin a thorough uh, review of the existing permits for fossil fuel development. So there's a lot of stuff going on with oil today, and we can see it actually sent oil back up. If we look at the 180-day, 15-minute chart, oil just skyrocketed back today. It's really been getting killed over the past few days but it did skyrocket back up today on this bad news um you know they're actually filing that filing that lawsuit so if that lawsuit can kind of get get reversed i think that 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 might help oil and, and that might make oil prices start to go back down but as it's getting harder to lease to actually uh get oil off of public lands and stuff like that that's going to make a big deal with these oil companies going forward they're not going to be able to profit as much because they're not able to to go on public land and, and uh, extract that oil out very interesting. If we look at like Exxon Mobil and Chevron, they did finish in the green today, which is good to see. Um, they don't look too bullish though, like their long-term charts, like especially Chevron, they look good, but not great. I would just say I'm pretty neutral on these stocks right now. Like I don't love this setup, but I, I don't hate it either. Um, in my opinion, the best thing with um, these stocks is no play. Uh, do you see like any like support levels or like anything you would watch out for? Yeah, I think on Chevron, there was a pretty good support around the 100 to 102 level. It bounced off of that. But like you said, it just it's not it's looking pretty risky. There is a pretty good resistance here around 105 or 106 on Chevron as well. Um, I think the main thing is going to be just oil itself slash CL. Um, it's too bad we can't play that or it's too bad USO isn't what USO used to be. USO used to be a great oil stock. And then we, we all know what happened a few years ago whenever oil went to zero and USO kind of uh it showed its true colors how it wasn't really with the oil market but 
I will. I, I just have to say that I think oil is bouncing pretty good off its support around 5750. But I, I will say I think in the shorter term, it should keep going down, though, just given the movement that we're seeing. I know it seems like a long time ago, Tom, but it was just like around this time last year that oil was uh, at zero or even negative for some time. You know, if we look at that chart of USO, it just got smashed. Like, what is it? Uh, late April. And then it's been slowly but uh, surely coming back up. So that's interesting to see. And I know we have some pretty interesting news with Tesla today, if you want to fill us in. Yeah, Elon Musk actually revealed yesterday that they will be accepting Bitcoin payments on Tesla, but there might be some type of fees associated with that. So I've heard. So just watch out. But if that's good for Tesla. Um, I would think it would have helped Bitcoin. But as we can see, the overall market might have made Bitcoin fall. Riot was really down today in minus 8%. MARA was down 10%. And Tesla was even down on the news, negative 4.8%. And just like we said, though, Tesla, NIO, and a lot of these uh, bigger tech stocks are starting to really fall off. And it's, kind of, it's just kind of showing um, the cycle that these stocks are going through. And really be careful. If Tesla falls below the support around 618, I think that it could start to really fall down. Sounds great. Well, let's get right into our member of the day and momentum plays. With today's member of the day, we have SIMP. So huge shout out. Uh, you're a very funny member, very uh, good person overall. Um, just a great member overall, extremely active. And, you know, you definitely uh, bring a lot of positivity to the chat. Uh, so thank you so much for all you do. And congratulations on that amazing trade with GSX. So um, he was playing GSX to the downside and he did very well with it. Um, I'm not sure how much he invested at, at first. It might have been like $1,000 or something like that. And it turned into like 7000 or something crazy like that. So a huge shout out and great job overall. But with that being said, let's get right into our momentum plays. With today's, with today's momentum play, we have RIOT. Yep, and with Riot, go ahead and make this fall below the $45 level. And they do have earnings today, so be a little bit careful. But in the morning, it should be a little better. All right, with the next one, we have QS. Yep, Quantum Scapes. I, I really love the name of this one for some reason, but make it fall below $47 even. I actually saw a good amount of uh, puts being bought on this one, so I wouldn't be surprised if we do see this one, you know, maybe retest the levels right around $40. That does look like to be a pretty strong support, and I did see some pretty, uh, some pretty big put orders. I believe it was on, I'm trying to find the exact ones. I believe it was on, yep, right here. It was the 50 strike puts for May 21st. There were quite a lot of contracts being bought on QS today, and all the volume was greater than the open interest, so we know that they are opening that position and just based off of how QS moved today it looks like it can definitely continue down and then with the last one we have NIO yep NEO another big one that ended up falling today but make them fall below 36.50 sounds great so we are eyeing all these stocks for potential day trades tomorrow only if they can break below the levels Tom listed and Tom you had an amazing uh, swing trade on NIO yesterday so um, in the discord uh, we had Tom calling out NIO puts yesterday. Overall, it ended up being a great swing trade. We could see NIO fell about 10% today, and it was a great profit overall. If you want to trade with Tom and I every single day, day trades, swing trades, and access to our bots, you can click the first link in the description down below for around $40 off. Uh, it was a solid trade, Tom. You know, it was down 10%, so it's awesome to see. And honestly, it looks like it might even fall a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I think it could keep going down. That daily chart was starting to really look bad. It was moving below all the SMAs and starting to really fall below those supports. So that's why we picked it up and it just ended up playing out really good for us. Sounds great. Well, let's get right into the $9 million trade for this Friday. We are looking at the Amazon 3,200 strike calls that expired this Friday, March 26th. Uh, if we look at Amazon, um, these options are around $110 out of the money and they expire in two days. So I'm definitely going to have to say that they are shorting these options, meaning that, meaning that they want Amazon below $3,200 by Friday. What do you think? Yep, I think that they're shorting them as well. Um, I've always been talking about this wedge on the Amazon chart here, and we can see that it's starting to come back up. It just touched that wedge a day or two ago, and now it's starting to come back down. It's also hovering right around the 100 SMA. So I think that there's a lot of key levels that it needs to try to break above, and I just think that it's not going to happen, especially with the way that these tech stocks and, and just the overall sectors are moving right now. I mean, there's a lot of negative momentum in the market, 
Amazon is still up, still up a ton over the past two years. Even if it falls another 20%, Amazon will still be up a lot over the past two years. So there's still a lot of room to the downside on these stocks. And I think that we might really start to see that here. Well, I think if we continue to see stocks fall, I think that's going to be an amazing opportunity for cash secured puts, just like we saw, what was it, like a month ago now? A month ago, a couple weeks ago, like three weeks ago, when NIO, Tesla, Apple, all these tech stocks were falling, it was an amazing time to sell cash secured puts. Like, for example, like when Tesla fell down to $550, what was that, on uh, March 8th, you know, you could sell puts that were $150 out of the money and still get great premiums. And even if Tesla continued to fall, you would pick it up at an amazing price. So we're getting really close to that setup again. So if we do see stocks fall again tomorrow, I know that I'll definitely be getting in to some cash secured puts like NIO looked pretty good, ZM, Palantir, Penn, DraftKings, and Tesla too. Yeah, definitely shoot those premiums up. And once those premiums go up, that's when the opportunities are there. And it's going to be a great time if we do see another big red day. For sure. Well, let's get right into our questions from the previous episode. With the first question, we have R saying, Hey guys, great video as usual. Can you go over NET and Palantir um, for the long term? So let's take a look. We'll go with NET first. I do like it. Both of these stocks um, are invested in by a uh, by the ARC fund. So that's good to see. Overall, I really like their sector for the long term, their long term charts do look pretty good and i think the best way to play both of these would be cash secured puts you know like for example if we look at palantir just because it's an easy example um we can see it's right around 22 dollars right now and if you go to like the let's say you go to the april 16th expiration and you sell the 20 strike put you know you could get about 78 dollars for selling that put and basically if it's below 20 dollars um, on the expiration date, you have to buy 100 shares at $20 each. And if it's not, you just keep the $78 and run. And it's really just a huge win-win if you like the stock for the long term. And even looking at NET, it does have some good premium. So I think the way to go on both of them would be cash secured puts. Yeah, I agree. And I really like the sector for the long term. So I think that that's the way to go. All right. With the next question, we have a word saying, thanks guys for the great show as always. What do you think about the action with DraftKings for the past few days? My calls hit their stop loss just below $70. Um, it acted as a good support all day. I'm um, looking where we should enter again. So DraftKings was such a letdown with March Madness, Tom. They had an amazing day on Friday and they actually broke all time highs uh, on Monday, but got rejected so hard, and it's just been a huge letdown. I'm a huge fan of the stock for the long term, but I'll tell you, in the short term, it's just it's just been doing nothing really besides going down. Um, I, it does look like there is a pretty big support around $65. So if we test that, that might be a good spot to dip by. Yeah, I think it'd be a good spot to dip by too. Um, March Madness is still going on, so there could still be some numbers that come out maybe next weekend or the weekend after that whenever the championships go on. Um, maybe they haven't disclosed their numbers yet, but I think the stock will still, will still do good in the longer term. But it, it is having trouble passing above the $75 resistance, and that's just going to be the main thing I'm watching right now is um, really that $74 to $75 level. For sure. Like I said, I am a huge fan of them for the long term. Um, but yeah, with the next question, we have Bravo saying, hey guys, awesome show. I am into DIS and MSGS. Any interesting entry points for the long term? I bought Disney a few shares at 196 and then uh, MSGS um, starting at 170. So I do like Disney for the long term, especially everything they have going on with Disney Plus. They looks to be uh, pretty good for them for the long term, um, but they're falling a lot right now too. Cash secured puts can be great. Um, if we look at MSGS, um, it also looks decent. I'm looking at their long term chart right now. I'm not a huge fan of this one for the long term, but it looks like you're getting it at a pretty good price. Uh, do you have any levels or anything, Tom? Yeah, with MSGS, there's a great support around $180, and it's also right around the 100 SMA. So if it bounces here and maybe we see a couple green days, it could be good. 
but it it just it's not looking good in the short term for it. It's had a lot of red days, and this is Madison Square Garden where uh, the New York Rangers and a bunch of people play uh, sports. So I think that once uh, once those venues are able to to open back up at full capacity, this stock will be great. So maybe it's a good time to get shares now because whenever the economy reopens, it could uh, it could be a pretty good stock. Sounds good. And then anything with uh, DIS. Yeah, Disney, I think, is awesome. Unfortunately, it's starting to go down in the shorter term. So I know you've got shares around 197 or 196. So what I would do is as it falls, average in. So buy a couple more shares here. Buy a couple more shares maybe when it hits 170 and a couple more at 150 if it hits there. I think Disney's an awesome long-term play, especially with Disney+. Plus, and they're still expected to almost double their growth over the next few years with that in members. So that, that should be a good thing going for them as well. Sounds great. With the next question, we have Vicky saying, uh, what's up, Mike and Tom? Thanks for all the updates and reviews. Can you please check out whether MU, AMAT, and LRCX has the best technicals? Uh, materials is one of the epicenter stock analysts are recommending. So try to decide between the best option, um, AMAT and LRCX against MU for the long term. So um, let's take a look at these three stocks. I like them all for the long term. MU is pulling back a lot lately, which can be a good sign, like especially if you're uh, planning on getting in this for the long term. If we take a look at AMAT, it is at all time highs, which is a little bit worrying if you want if you like them for the long term because they're you know they're a little expensive right now. And then with LRCX, let's take a look at this one. It's also it's kind of mid range. So uh, what are your thoughts, Tom? Yeah, I think that with technicals, I think AMAT and MU look a little bit better than LRCX. LRCX almost looks like a pretty solid head and shoulder setup right now. If we, if it gets rejected here around this 580 level, then this will be defined as a pretty good shoulder. And I think it will start to go down in the shorter term. But for the long term, it looks like a great company if you can pick up shares lower. Same with AMAT. I mean, this stock's awesome as well. But like you said, it's just scary to buy it whenever it's at all time highs because it, it probably will pull back probably to like, I would say at least 110 or maybe 100 in the longer term, you know, before it starts to go up again. And then uh, what was the other one, Mike? Uh, MU. Yeah, MU is my favorite though. I think Micron could be awesome. They are double topping around 95, but I think MU is my favorite one out of all of them if you can get it a, a little lower. Yeah, I think my favorite thing is just uh, sell a cash. Consider selling a cash secured cash secured puts on all of them. It's really a win win situation, like especially if you go pretty far out of the money. MU is down about three percent today, so like let's say you went out to the April 9th expiration, you can go about you know let's say you went to the seventy strike put, and you can sell it for about thirty bucks right now. Um, the worst thing that happens is you get assigned and you pick up shares at um, what is it seventy dollars each for the long term, which is you know especially if you like it for the long term, it could be a huge win, and you can do that with all of these stocks, LRCX. Um, AMAT too. I really like going pretty far out of the money because if you do get assigned, you're getting it at a, it's such a great price. So I think cash secured puts would just definitely be the way to go overall, considering you like them for the long term. And I was also talking with Vicky and she was also brought up the point of using covered calls on these. So let's say you do uh, sell the MU 70 strike put or whatever put and you do get assigned, you can just turn right around and then sell a covered call on them and then collect premium on the upside. And if you do get assigned, you know, you're gonna sell at a super high price. And I think that would be a very smart thing to do. With the next question, we have Blue saying GME died. So Tom, let's take a look at this one. Down around 34% today off of earnings. It just got crushed today. It's definitely not looking too good. It does have support right around $100. What are your thoughts? Yeah, that's very unfortunate today to see it down 33%. I know that all the guys holding it are, are going to be pretty sad to see that. But it is what it is. You know, GameStop is pretty overpriced. If we go to the daily chart, I personally could possibly see it going to 100 tomorrow or maybe even going down below 100 because obviously if it falls another 33%, we'll be a little bit below 100. But I, I do have to say in the shorter term, I am pretty bearish on it. Um, unfortunately, it's going down and it's probably hurting some people. But, you know, guys, at the same time, GameStop was pretty overpriced. And unfortunately, there's no way a stock like this is just going to go to 500 or 1,000 and stay there. It was very risky overall, um, but with that being said, Tom, do you have any last minute stocks, options, or any insight for the market for tomorrow? Yeah, one stock I'm really looking at to possibly do some cash 
Cash Secure puts on if we start to see it fall is AMD. I know we were talking about Micron and some of those semiconductors earlier and also uh, AMAT, but I, I will say AMD is getting close to the support around 73 or 74. It looks like it's going to fall below that. And if it does fall below that, I'll try to sell some puts for around the $60 area. And if I get assigned, awesome, I'll get A and B shares at $60. I really love AMD for the longer term and they make processors and graphics cards. So I think that they just have uh, two great things going for them and NVDA. Um, NVDA, they make graphics cards and you can see that they just make graphics cards and how much growth that they've had. So I think AMD could have similar growth to this. Good stuff. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to trade with Tom and I every single day, day trades, swing trades, and access to our bots, don't forget to click the first link in the description down below, about $40 off. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. But other than that, thanks for watching.